Hi guys and welcome to another Whiskey Geek review with me Ben. Today I'm headed back to Balveni with the 14 year old Caribbean cask. So I reviewed the 12 year old, the Doublewood, not so long ago and I mentioned in that video that that was a premium whiskey for me at the time. It was on the higher end of what I was willing to spend on a bottle of whiskey and it was also rewarding for me. I had a soft spot for it, I enjoyed it. This 14 year old was uh, recommended by people who enjoyed the Doublewood. So I grabbed a bottle. Um, and this is building on the history that Balveni have of pioneering wood. They claim to have come up with the double maturation process and they were also early adopters with the finishing process, taking spirit from ex-bourbon casks and then decanting it into a different cask to give it a different, to bolster its flavor, to give it a different profile. So that is what they've done here with the Caribbean cask. The last portion, don't know how long, but it's typically a fairly short proportion of the, the maturation time. The last portion of that is done in your finishing cask. So in this case, rum. This is 43% and it is unfortunately um, colored on the back of the carton here. We've got those dreaded words, mit Farbstoff, which means in German there's coloring added. Nevertheless, I will take a look at the color. Um, it's a shade eight or sauternes, which is a, a nice burnished gold. But getting into the more important stuff, the nose. It first presents you with this um, interesting beeswax tone, but then there's uh, a floral element, it's kind of heather, um, honey, honeycomb, some vanilla, and a really nice um, wholesome cereal element to it. It reminds me of whole grain bread. It's a bit malty, a bit of barley. There are some fruity hints to it, dried apricot, that kind of thing, but I'd say they're background. And there's also very subtly, very subtly, a kind of a weak, milky coffee. Moving on to the palette. So it's quite light and fresh, but there's a sensible progression from the nose, um, similarities in the vanilla, the honeycomb, um, the floral and the maltiness is all there. But you also now are getting some more tannins are coming forward, um, dry grass, a hint of oak. And that beeswax element um, is kind of in the background. It's still present, but it's in the background. And I feel it's tied to an interesting mouthfeel. The best descriptor I can come up with is kind of chalky as it transitions into the finish. It's got this odd, dry, chalky feel to it. And there's a, a warmth that grows with it as well. The finish, some spices bubble up, some cinnamon, some clove. It's a little bit warming and there's some of the sweetnesses are presenting again. Honey, touch of the sweet uh, dried apricot. It's got some of those tannins still presenting, but they're subtle, they're subdued. And it's, I'd say, short to medium length. But what really lingers on, uh, if anything, is just kind of that warmth rather than it being much uh, flavour. So I start off really quite enjoying this whiskey, um, but the longer it's sat with me, and, the, and as my palate has developed and my experience has developed, it's kind of um, gone the wrong way for me. I'm only rating it at 77%, which is a reasonable score, but not an amazing score, particularly at this price point. I think the beeswax um, is not, not up my alley. It's not like Deanston, where you get a nice waxy spirit. This is not textural, it's like a flavor, it's an oddity. And then that peculiar mouthfeel also goes the wrong way for me, unfortunately. There's another bottle that's just been sat in whiskey purgatory with me for far too long, waiting to be finished. But thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, all the usual, like, comment, subscribe, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Cheers.